Hello and welcome to another edition of Project Next Generation Online. My name is uh, Aaron Sievers. I am the technology librarian at the Elmwood Park Public Library. And today we are going to finally come to the dramatic conclusion of our poster design class. Uh, we've been working hard creating a poster using Adobe Photoshop. And uh, it's been two classes now. We're going to wrap things up with the third. So if you're just joining us for the first time, uh, take, a, take a trip over to our Project Next Generation uh, uh, web page. You can get there by going to elmwoodparklibrary.org slash png. Uh, and that'll take you to uh, everything you need to know about what we're all about. We are technology classes for kids. We're at the Elmwood Park Public Library. You can even check out a laptop to follow along with uh, all this at home. With your, You can check it out with your library card and use Adobe Photoshop. And once you've got Adobe Photoshop, go hit up our uh, YouTube channel, which you may already be watching it on YouTube, but we've got a playlist here on our channel for all of the Photoshop. Um, whoa, I don't want to play it. <laughs> I just wanted to view it. Um, so we've got a, a playlist here for all of the Photoshop work that we have done. Uh, so starting with our first class, that was kind of a two or three, I think it was just a two part class, uh, just covering the basics. Then we got a little bit more advanced with some filters and then we're doing our uh, Photoshop poster design class. And actually it looks like uh, I need to add part two to this as well. So I will do that as soon as this is over. Should be another video in here. So once you're caught up and you're ready to watch this video for the exciting conclusion of Project Next Generation's poster design class, you can uh, follow along with us. So if you remember where we left off last time, I'm going to just close out of these browser windows and let's open up Adobe Photoshop. Let's find the right, uh, the right file. Where'd you go? Not this one, this one. Got a couple different versions going, I'm trying to figure out which one I like the best because I think probably the biggest challenge of this whole uh, class has been from, uh, cr from the creative side. Trying to figure out uh, what what parts, um, you know, it's kind of like you've got a blank canvas and you can do whatever you want. So uh, that can actually be kind of intimidating at a certain point. So I made some choices uh, from last time. Made some choices. Number one, about this font. I have decided to go with a different font. I'm going to change it up, uh, which I... Uh, you know, normally I like the futuristic kind of sans serif fonts. Mm. Got my coffee, so you know it's PNG online. Okay, normally I like to go with the sans serif fonts, but I decided this time we're gonna switch it up. We're gonna go with a font called Elephant. Should be built in to, uh, you know what? It's too much typing, I'm just gonna type E-L-E. -E. There it is. So we're gonna go with Elephant italic we're gonna hit okay on that and since this is a bigger font we're gonna to have to shrink it down just a little bit to fit on the page all right so and uh, I think we're just gonna go ahead and get rid of this we another change that we're gonna make is the treatment to the uh, to the to the uh, text style. So we had been trying to do some some interesting stuff with like a transparent kind of glass-like uh, uh, text style. And it kind of worked, but I was never really fully happy with it. So we're gonna get rid of that. And we're gonna do something actually, honestly, a lot easier. So hang on one sec while I just modify this real quick. I'm going to just add the online, oops, to be part of the same text block and I'm going to select the whole thing and I'm going to go down here and I'm going to center it. And then once it's centered, I got to move back to the uh, this tool and just kind of bring it back here. Okay. And then for this one, I think we're going to go with the exact same font treatment. Normally, I don't know. Normally I like to keep it. I like to add a couple of different fonts, but um, this time I just figured I'd try it. No harm in trying it. I've been kind of doing a very similar uh, poster design style for a few years now. 
and I like it a lot, but uh, I thought maybe this time I would try something slightly different. So, okay. So we got all the big fonts uh, changed. And then for this one down here, I'm just going to leave this the way it is and change the color to be a nice white so that it is legible. It's not legible here, but when it's printed out in full size, you'll be able to see it. It's the fine print about our lovely friends at the State Library of Illinois uh, and the LSTA uh, funding that we receive. Okay, how do I, let's zoom out. I'd like to zoom out. Uh, let's go to fit on screen. Okay, so we've got updated fonts. We've got updated uh, color on the fine print down there. We need to shrink this a little bit so that it'll fit. We'll get to that later. Let's leave that alone for the moment. Okay, so we are talking about the, the treatment of the, uh, the layer style. So we are going to change that up. And um, yeah, so sorry, there's a little bit of delay on the feed over here. It's throwing me up. Okay, um, also the neighbor's dog is going completely bananas right now. I don't know. There's nothing. There's nothing going on in the entire neighborhood. It just, it just needs attention, I guess. Um, so I'm trying to ignore that as I remember what we're doing. Oh, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to the bottom of the screen. There's a whole section. I'm going to take my face off the screen so you can see this better. We're going to go down to styles. And, um, oh, well, first we need to click, sorry, with your with your layer selected, whichever layer of text you want to um, to go first, to work on first, select it. And then go down here to click on styles, and it's going to bring up this whole gallery. If you don't see the full gallery, there's a drop down up here where things are kind of uh, grouped by um, type. So you can hit show all, or you can go through individuals. Um, so this is quite a long list. These are um, these are called layer styles. So this is very similar to what we were doing in the last class, where we were adjusting, like making a bevel and doing this and that to a a font but it doesn't it's not just fonts it works on all kinds of stuff um on any layer um some of them do don't work and some of them do so if you click one and you don't see anything happen it's possible that uh you know for whatever reason like this layer is just not compatible with uh uh with the with this layer style or something like that but so uh, we were trying to make glass. So I actually found that if you take a couple of these uh, and combine them, I got a pretty pretty close effect without having to go through all the trouble that we went through last time. So I'm going to start with blue glass. I'm going to click on that, and right there you can see it changes my my font to a pretty good looking color. We can we can zoom in a little bit so that you can really see how this progresses. Okay, and then what's cool about layer styles is not all of them, but some of them will stack on top of each other. So I'm going to add this one called Blue Stroke. And that just adds a blue outline. Oh, come on. See, sometimes... Oh, I don't have my... Okay, there it goes. Okay, so the, the blue outline or stroke is now added to the, uh, to the around the edge. And then last up, I'm going to hit Blue Ghost, which is going to give it a little bit of kind of shiny transparency. So, so that is looking good. So I, after I did that, I was kind of thinking like, why, why am I bothering with all this other stuff? Whoop! hello, <laughs> you know who I am. Okay, so yeah, after I did that, I kind of was wondering why I was bothering with all of the other, you know, long process of trying to get all that working. Okay, so next up, we are just going to, basically we just want to, um, do that to all of our other fonts that we have on our uh, screen. So let's grab that magnifying glass, right click, whoop, right click and go fit on screen. And we're going to switch back to the layers tab down here because instead of going through each one and triple clicking on all those layer styles again and again and again, what we're going to do is a little bit faster. We're going to, I'm going to get my face off the screen here. We are just going to, um, so here is, I'm circling it with my mouse, here is our Project Next Generation title right here, that is the layer. And you'll notice now there is a little FX next to it, and that 
uh, is basically just sh telling you a layer style has been applied to this uh, to this layer. And if you click on the FX, it will double click on the FX. It will bring up the the panel um, that lets you kind of you can you can adjust it even more if you wanted to. Um, so that's really cool, and we'll come back to that later. But the other thing that you can do is you can now right click on that layer and come down here to copy layer style. And then on your other layers of text that you might have in your, in your or other layers period, any other layer, uh, you can right click on those and just hit paste layer style. So it just takes that same style and it lays it on top of that layer. So we got uh, one more, the URL here. So we'll go right click and paste layer style. So that just saved us a bunch of work, right? Okay, cool. So, uh, all right, what's next? So next up, um, I was kind of messing with the composition of the, uh, of our, of what we have here. And I was thinking, let's drop this down low and let's, um, uh, Let's move the powder explosion to be kind of in the middle. And don't forget when you move it, uh, since we had that color overlay, you might accidentally move the color overlay, uh, which is not what you want. So I'm going to control Z, undo that change. And I'm going to link these two layers together over here. Um, so I got to select, oops, those are the wrong layers. Here we go. I got to select this one, hold down the shift key, to select the one below it and hit the link button. So now when I move those, they move together. They're locked together. They're linked, chained, locked, whatever you want to call them. So, all right. Mm. I love the coffee. Okay, so next up, what are we doing? Um, next up, what I would like to do is I would like to add uh, kind of a, a shape around the edge. Or, uh, okay, let's keep working. Hang on. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's keep working with this text. One last thing to do with this text. Well, two, two last things to do with the text. I want to give this a little bit of energy since we've got an explosion here. So let's, let's grab the text tool with our layer selected. And down here at the bottom is a little uh, T icon that says create warped text if you hover over it. And if you click on that, it brings up a pane and a drop down. And a couple of different ways to warp your text. You can do an arc, you can do a, a bulge, you can do like a, a wavy thing, all kinds of stuff. These are fun to play with, so please uh, go for it. I'm gonna go with an arc, and uh, right off the bat, that's a that's a lot of arc right there. So that, well, let's so we're gonna we're gonna dial that back by uh, adjusting the bend slider. So we want it to arc, but it doesn't need to. It doesn't need to like bend in half, right? Okay. And then the other sliders, I'm not gonna mess with, but I encourage you to to kind of play with that stuff because that's really cool. Maybe, maybe just a little more. Okay. Should we take it to 40? Should we make it a nice round number? Sure. Okay, click okay on that. And as you can see, we lost a little bit off the page, so we need to just make an adjustment. So we're just going to shrink it down a little bit until it fits. Uh, maybe just a little more. And then just kind of place it wherever makes sense. Maybe a little higher on the page. Okay. And I might go even a little higher than that. There we go. All right, cool. Looking good. Now we need to do the exact same thing for the bottom layer. So same thing, text tool. We need to select the text tool and then go down here to the text warp, drop down box, arc. Now it's arcing the wrong way. So what do we do about that? Well, you pull this slider the opposite way and you go from positive 50 to negative. So we'll put, we'll 
put like a we'll put like a mm, 25 on there you can also just click in this box and type in it if you want a nice perfect number and you're having trouble dialing it in and now we can move that kind of get that uh, yeah somewhere somewhere in there maybe a little bit of overlap I like a, a little bit of overlap okay uh, I think we need it okay <laughs> okay so next uh, oh sorry the, the, I looked away and then when I looked back I was like man that doesn't look centered at all I'm not a fan of that okay All right, next up, what are we gonna do? Well, I wanted to add something kind of cool. So uh, we're gonna grab the line tool and we're gonna set the width to about 100. So this is, well, this isn't the line tool. It's the, well, I guess it is the line tool. But the line tool, that's a little bit misleading because the line tool can be the shape tool. S yeah, see, depending on what you're clicking on, it, it changes its name. See, right now it's custom shape. But, uh, or it could just be like the, what is it, the rectangle tool? Whatever it is, it lives in this little box and it has, look, looks like uh, seven different modes. So, um, down here that you can play with. So I want, I just want a straight line. So I'm going to go with the line tool and I'm going to set the width of that line to be about 100. And I want the color to be white. Uh, nothing special here, nothing fancy, just straight up uh, like this. So then I'm going to draw a line. And right off the bat, it lets me draw the, a straight line, but it goes kind of all over the place. It could go, you know, diagonally. I want it to be like straight up and down. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and that really locks it in straight. So that's what I'm looking for. And I'm just going to kind of make a line. All right. And you'll kind of see what I'm going for here in a second. I'm going to do it again. Another one. I'm going to basically draw a box around this whole thing. Okay. And uh, so one thing to watch out for is I was um, I noticed as I was holding down the shift key to make the, the lines straight, um, I, I don't know exactly how to explain it, but um, somehow a lot of my lines ended up being grouped into the same layer. And that's not what I want. I want each line to be a different layer. So watch out for that if that's happening to you. Um, I don't know exactly how to explain how to prevent that from happening, but you should, in the end, have uh, four, if you're doing what I'm doing and not just doing your own thing, you should have four uh, distinct layers. So sh over here in the, uh, in the layer, you've got shape one, two, three, and four. And remember, you can relabel those um, if you need to. Okay, now these look super dumb right now. So we're gonna we're gonna fix them up a little bit. Uh, first thing we want to do is we just want to zoom in and we want to make sure that they are all uh, connected. So we can connect them by just grabbing the move tool and clicking on whichever one. And we're just gonna stretch the ends until they kind of overlap. And since these are just super basic uh, like rectangular lines at 90 degree angles, this part is pretty easy. Okay, so nothing to it. All you gotta do is, but don't forget to commit your changes after you change each one. But, uh, and since they're all the same color, they should all blend together, which is cool. And just make sure that they, that you don't have any jagged edges, right? So let's see, uh, another one here. And neighbor's dog is still barking. They're great neighbors. All right, and we're almost done. Okay, so now we've got a nice, uh, we should have a nice box. So let's zoom out, and take a look at it. Yeah, not bad. Okay, uh, what's going on over here? I don't know. I guess that was just a... Uh, also worth noting is when you're dealing with an image this big, um, when uh, when you're zoomed all the way out, uh, sometimes things can look a lot uh, more different. 
if that's the proper way to say that, than they do when you're zoomed like super, super uh, close. And so a good thing to do is to use, when, when you have the magnifying glass tool selected, right click and toggle between the actual pixels and the print size. Because it might look weird when you have it at fit on screen, you know, whatever it might be, if you're seeing something that looks a little strange. To me, I see a jagged edge right here. So what's good, uh, good practice is to hit actual pixels and that's gonna zoom you in pretty pretty far because this is such a big image. But then you can really get in there and inspect things. And then probably the most important uh, one to toggle is print size because this is an approximation of what it's gonna look like when it prints. So if you see something that looks bad here, um, then that's you're like oh if if your intention is to print it then that you're gonna want to take take notice, okay so let's take uh, all of these shapes that we have and I'm gonna hit fit on screen again and so the first thing that I want to do is we're gonna play with these layers I'm gonna drop most of these layers down below the powder explosion so that the powder explosion kind of looks like it is bursting out of the lines. I think that's a really cool look. Um, so I wanna go for that. And you can do as many as you want or as few as you want. I think uh, when I was practicing, I had uh, I had it like this, but now that I see it, well, let's see, what if, what if we put shape two up? Oh, which one is shape two? Oh, shape two. That's not the one I want. Which one are you? Over here on the left. Who are you? You're shape one. Okay. What does it look like if we put shape one up? Nah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Why not? Okay. Then the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, link all of these layers together so that no part of our square can be jostled or moved without moving the other ones. Just like we did with the powder explosion earlier. The one trick on this though is that we need to, um, oh, where's my button over here? I need this one. We need to use the control key. So before, when we were selecting layers, oh, let me get, <laughs> I don't, uh, let me get myself off the screen here. Uh, well, whatever. All right. So before when we were, um, I don't think I have a, a webcam overhead webcam. This is the one uh, 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 contingency that I never uh, anticipated. Okay. So normally you would hold the shift key and you'd select your next layer and uh, and it would just select every layer between the top one and the one that you're clicking on, right? So if you want to be selective, like I want shape one and four, and I want shape three, two and three. So I would click shape four and hold the shift key and click shape one. But then when I get down here and I'm still holding the shift key and I click shape three, it selects everything in between. So how do you prevent that from happening? That is where you use the control key instead. So it might be in a different place on your keyboard, but it's the one that says CTRL. And when you do that, let me get my face off the screen, then uh, you can just select the ones that you're clicking on. So hold down the control key, and I'm gonna hit four and one. Oops, come on. Four and one and two and three, and then I'm gonna hit the link layers button. So now I can move this all around, and that's pretty cool, because it wasn't centered before, so now let's make sure it gets uh, centered, even though I'm just kinda eyeballing it. Um, yeah, so that is, um, that's starting to look good. Next up, let's make it look even cooler. Let's add our own layer style to this. So with um, with all the layers still selected, uh, we can go in here, go up to layer. Oh, we can't do it. We need to do it one at a time. Okay, that's okay. I suspected as much. 
All right, so we're gonna click on one layer and we're gonna go up to the layer menu and we're gonna go to layer style and we're gonna go to style settings. This might look a little familiar to you. So now we're not gonna do much to this. What I would like to do is I would like to add a glow. So I wanna add a outer glow of white. So that's, that's good to go. And I want it to be bright, real bright. There we go, cool. You can also add an inner glow if you want, but an inner glow is a little bit more subtle effect, so you may not really notice uh, much of a difference. So like here, if I choose, if I add an inner glow of like yellow, just so that you can kind of see the difference, and I really crank it all the way up, I, from here, at least at this zoom level, I can't really see uh, any change. So, so yeah. Now, remember from before, we have one shape, we have one side of our shape, our square, uh, with a um, with a layer style on it now. We need to copy that layer style onto our other side. So we're just gonna go to this one, the one that has the FX next to it. Right click, copy layer style, and then paste it on all of the others. So now we've got a cool glowing square. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's cool. I like it. Another little detail here. Let's go back to our text, uh, our project next generation layer. And now that we've got a light source, I mean, like, if you think about it, like that, that square is emanating light, right? It's bright, it's glowing. So let's go in here and edit our uh, Project Next Generation font, and let's make, let's change the lighting angle. So the lighting angle is actually set up that, so that the light is coming from the bottom. Um, so we just wanna verify that by looking at it and seeing like this these white highlights, that could be like an underglow, right? So we can kind of tweak that and mess with it and see how that looks and hit OK. And then we want to do the same thing for our technology class uh, font over here. So we're going to uh, click the F, double click the FX to bring up the layer styles panel. And we got light coming from above it. So let's change that lighting source to be from above like that. How about? And remember, you could just type in the box if you want, 90 degrees. So, okay. Yeah, so that's looking cool. All right, so now, I feel like we're getting close to the end here. What, what are we gonna do? And so I got an idea that kind of incorporates my original plan, but also changes it up a little bit and, and makes it cool. So here's my idea. We're gonna grab the line tool again, and we are going to just draw another white line. So I'm gonna hold the shift key and make this one, make sure this one is uh, just kind of a straight line. And let's uh, let's zoom in a little bit. And so this line, my intention for this line is for it to shoot out of the frame at like a diagonal, like whoosh, like coming at you, right? So what we need to do is we need to add, we need to distort this line. So we're gonna go up here to image, and there's a whole area for um, transforming shapes. So you can, and there's different categories. There's free, tra I, you gotta play with these. These are so cool. So you can really get in, you can take like a normal boring shape and just like really rough it up and make it crazy. So, cause there's free transform, uh, which kind of let, lets you go nuts. 
there's skew, there's distort, and what we're gonna do is perspective. So we're gonna use the perspective, and so those those boxes, those points of manipulation pop up again. And But this time, when you grab one, and I wanna grab the upper corner, it's very small, and I want to, so when I stretch it, it stretches it out like, uh, on both sides okay and then you can also move it up or down or however you want to do it right okay and then I get a message that says when you do this it turns a live shape into a regular path which I think basically just means it's gonna limit the amount of editing that you'll be able to do to it in the future but I'm okay with that the other thing I want to do is just give it a little bit more stretch because I'm thinking I kind of want it to stick out. I want it to stick out of the box a little bit. And remember, you can rotate if you need to change the angle a little bit. Whatever the case may be. Okay, now I want to repeat that. Uh, my idea was to do uh, a few of these. So... Uh, let's make another one. So make my line, go up to image, go to transform, go to perspective. Give it a little bit of uh, skew. A little goes a long way. And now I want to just stretch it a bit. Kind of get it place and then last but not least I just want to make another one of these but I want it to be up here so rather than recreate it I am just going to click on this shape I'm gonna to go to layer and I'm gonna duplicate it but that just gives whoa 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 control Z control Z okay but that just gives me the exact same thing which is not gonna work. So from here, I go to image, I go to reset, no, I can never find this one. Where are you? Rotate, image, rotate, and then go down here. Make sure you are on uh, this section of this menu, which is all layers. This section would be, the top section is the whole canvas. I wanna flip it horizontally, and if I were to hit the wrong one, it would flip the entire thing. So that's not what we want. We want to go, or I'm sorry, we, we're going to flip vertically. And there you have it. Now I can move this up into place and put it kind of about right there. So that's looking good. And now I would like to just copy that and put that on the other side. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to hold down the shift key on my, whoa, <laughs> not that one. <laughs> Not that one either. Okay, where where are we? Nope. We'll just keep hitting buttons until we find the right one. Holding down the shift key. No, no, no. Remember, well, these are all side by side, but we'll hold down the control key. And click each layer. Uh, I need to do it over here in the menu. So here we go. Okay, shape six. Shape five, copy. And shape five. That's all three. Then I should be able to right click and I can go to duplicate layers and I could give it a name or whatever, but I'm just gonna hit okay. And then that really does just put a duplicate set right on top of the old set. So I need to go up again and go to image, rotate down to uh, flip horizontally, boom. Now we put this over here, and now we've got our shards that are like shooting out of our box. It's very epic and dramatic. So crazy, but you know what would make this even cooler is if we kept the rainbow motif. Because I see six of these. So how about, let's go back to the styles pane and let's choose one of these so 
unlike the last video where I totally uh, screwed up the name of the colors and said like uh, Roy G. Biv, and then I tried to like l rattle them all off and I got them in the wrong order. Red, orange, yellow. I think we could do a green in the middle, maybe. I'm not sure. And then blue, indigo, violet. And it just so happens that there are some cool kind of styles down towards the bottom. They're in this wow plastic section. So if you're looking through the sections, they're in the one called wow plastic. Um, so let's try this. Uh, the first one is going to be red. So here we go. Just double click or a single click. Perfect. Second one, we got orange. Third one, yellow. Come on. Yellow. There we go. I don't know why it didn't work the first time. And then we'll skip green. I'm not sure about green. Uh, I mean, there is a green one, but that would require another shape. Uh, then we got some blue. We got some indigo. And we got some violet. Come on. There we go. Okay. So, uh, that's looking cool. But right off the bat, I am seeing some issues with the layers. I think we need to rearrange these layers. And we could, get, we could go over here on the side and kind of drag and drop layers and all that. But the easier thing to do would just be to click on the layer that you want to adjust. Right click. And at the middle of the menu here, there are four options. Bring to front, bring forward, bring backward, send backward, or send to back. We want to bring this layer to the front. So that's what we're gonna do. And that pretty much puts it on top from now on. So any other ones that are buried behind anything else, do the same for those. Right click, bring to front. Right click, bring to front. And right click, bring to front. So that they are all shooting out, right? Cool. I think this is looking pretty good. All right, let's take a look at our overall composition. Uh, we're gonna just go hit fit on screen, see how this is looking. So right off the bat, uh, I think I mentioned this last time, was that I really was thinking it would be cool to have some kind of focal point right in the middle. And I couldn't think of what that would, was gonna be. And earlier today, it hit me like a ton of bricks. You know what it is? It's the PNG logo. It was right there in front of me the entire time. Just needs to be moved right to the center. And it looks pretty good. I am happy with it. So then we can just slide this over. We do need to kind of resize it ever so slightly. Slide that URL over to just be centered like so. And boy, what do you think? Are we done? I think we might be done. I mean, at this point, you could go in and you can make some tweaks and, you know, however you want to, you know, if you want to make any adjustments, oops, not like that. Ooh, I do think I like shrinking those down just a little bit. So we'll do that. Just a smidge. We'll have these shoot out a little bit farther. Uh, yeah, just making these ever so slightly thinner. Not too thin. And then have them just a little bit out like that. That's no good. How do, how do you shrink them? I managed to shrink the one below it, and that's that's all I want to do. I just want to copy what I did there. But you see how I am just kind of rejecting the changes, like, as it, you know. Oh, yeah, we need to turn that just a little bit. And this will also give them a little bit of, um, uh, a slight difference between each one so they don't look like 
they're full on copies. You know, if we if we change them a little bit, each one a little bit, it, they become unique. So that's good. We like unique. Uh, ah, I can never remember. Ah, there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Grab that. Move that up like so. Firing color lasers into the universe. That's how I like to spend my day. I don't know about you guys. This is looking pretty cool. This reminds me of uh, like a Daft Punk. Um, maybe some rejected Daft Punk cover art. Which uh, may sound disparaging, but I take that as a high compliment. One more time. Okay, so we're coming in on the home stretch. So now that we've kind of moved these a little bit, stretched them out, made them a little bit, uh, speaking of stretched out, let's, let's get a little more length on that guy. Sure, yeah. Now that we've freed up a little bit more room, we can make this ever so slightly larger. Ooh, I don't know if I like that being that much larger. But it might make sense for the color to be shooting out of the logo, otherwise it just kind of starts apropos of nothing. Does that make sense for the... Okay, so remember what we said. Right click and bring to front because you can see the purple is overlapping there. So we want to do that. So I can stretch that red to come back however I want. I, right now I'm just trying to gauge like, do I like that? I think that's the way to do it. I think that's pretty cool. I think I am going to skip the green. How much time? Well, we've got a little bit of time. Shall we try a green? We'll try a green and see how we like it. We could do a green on top and a green on bottom. I don't know. So we're going to make that line with the line tool. We're going to go to image, uh, rot nope, not rotate, transform, perspective. And we just want to stretch this out a little bit. And then maybe doo -doo -doo -doo, pull that down a little bit. I don't know. I, I, this might be like a little bit too busy. So, But we'll try it. That's the whole point is we can totally uh, see what it looks like. Okay, we need to go back to styles. And we need we got a green one right here. And uh, let's do right click and send backward. Although sometimes when you do this, like send backward, send backward, send backward, you might have to click it like a million times. So sometimes it's easier just to take the layer that you want and uh, send that to the front. Although I think in this case, I am just gonna move this shape manually. We'll go down to, there's technology class, so we just need to be one below it. Yeah, I'm not in love with that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to skip it. I think we're going to right click and we are going to delete layer. It was worth a shot, but ultimately, I think with the amount of green that's right here in the center, you know, like, it's cool. It's cool. We don't need it. So, hmm. we're going to finish up just as I'm finishing my coffee. That's not bad. All right, we'll stretch that just a little bit to make sure it goes behind there. Let's take a closer look here. Make sure everything is kind of, yeah, it's looking cool. And then I also wanted to take a closer look around the edges of the page here. 
Let's see. Do we want it to shoot all the way off the, the page? I kind of don't think so. I like some of them are have made it off the page. They're shooting out. Some of them are are almost there. You know, it, I think it gives it a little bit more energy of like these things are all shooting out at different. <laughs> I'm making very broad hand gestures over here. You missed my. These things are shooting out. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So I think I think it's important. Not important, but I think I like. I think it's a nice touch that they are all kind of like at different points. They're making different amounts of progress, right? Okay, I don't know. That's and then you can also play with like uh like let's zoom in up here. You can also play with things like do you want uh certain elements to overlap other elements? You know, so like you could have. Uh, let's see, we'll bring it, so like look at the, down here where the P is here, you, we could say bring that to front and have that overlap, um, you know, you can play with all that kind of stuff, so, but ultimately I think I want the logo to be up a little bit higher, I do like the little spike of, uh, uh, powder mixing behind the, the word, I like that, so I want to keep that. So I'll, I won't raise it all the way up, but uh, yeah, I think it's looking good. The only thing that I might, maybe I'll, I'll tweak later is adding a little bit more text in the middle, saying like live streaming you know, videos every Friday at 1030, but, uh, or maybe like, so the other thing is if you're making a poster, especially if you're making a flyer, thinking about uh, what information do you want to convey uh, in, your, in, your, in your poster or flyer. And so right now, Project Next Generation Online, Technology Classes for Teens, that, that doesn't mean a whole lot, I realize that. So maybe adding something in here about like, uh, you know, I don't know. I think I will look up a little something about technology, maybe just something a little bit more descriptive about what we do. That's all. So otherwise, I think we're done. So I'm going to go here to file and I'm going to click uh, save as and we'll give this a new, we'll give this a new name. Save it with our other files here. I don't think we have anything called PNG online 2021. So I'm just going to give it that name and click save. And then I also would like to uh, save a JPEG copy. JPEG is another file format that's a little bit more, uh, um, what's the word? Uh, I keep wanting to say accessible, and that's not, that's not, the, compatible. <laughs> got it. Took me a minute, but I got it. So we're going to hit click save as again. And we're going to hit, uh, in the drop-down box, below the file name, there's a drop-down box. Normally, it's set to Photoshop, PSD documents, Photoshop documents. But we want to change that to JPEG. And then we're just going to click Save. And a couple of boxes are going to pop up asking us what quality we'd like to save our file as. We're going to go with maximum quality. And hit OK. And now, even though the JPEG, like... The Photoshop document, we should take a look at that. The Photoshop document is probably pretty large because Photoshop documents typically are, especially when you're dealing with something big like a poster, like what we're working on today. So here is our final Photoshop document. It is 225 megabytes. That is a quarter of a gig. That is big, okay? And the JPEG that we generated right here is 18 megabytes. So that's much smaller, but it's still very big. The reason I bring this up is because now that you are finished, uh, if you made a poster, you can email it to me or send it to me and I will print it out and then you can come pick it up. And we've got, you know, quality uh, photo paper and we have uh, a poster printer at the library so we can make this actually a 24 by 30 wait oh, that'd be 
24 by 36 uh, uh, poster. It'd be huge. It'd be the size of a movie poster, you know, almost. And um, so you can email it to me, but it will be tricky to email things to me if you are dealing with a file that's super big. So if you're not sure, uh, I think most email um, services will let you send a file that's about 20 megabytes and that you'll be okay, an attachment. Um, but uh, if yours is bigger or you're running into problems, just send me an email and say, hey, I have this thing I want you, I want you to print for me. How do I get it to you? And, and I'll work with you to, to make sure that it happens. So, so that'll be really cool. Yeah, I'll totally print that off and we'll roll it into a, 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 a tube and put a, a rubber band on it and leave it at the library for you to pick up and it'll be, and you can put it up on your wall or, you know, wherever you want. And, uh, and yeah, so, uh, let's see. So how do you get in touch with me? Well, let's take a look. Let's go back to the website. So if you've got at the end of this class, if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, I'm getting all ahead of myself here. Let's go to elmwoodparklibrary.org slash PNG. All right, so let me open this up. If you're watching us on YouTube, uh, which would be on any of these uh, Photoshop. Okay. We're going to pause that. Okay. So on any of these Photoshop uh, uh, classes, you can look at the description, and there should be a link in the description that will take you to our class blog. So our class blog has kind of everything that we've been working on. So, um, and then please fill out this uh, survey about the poster, uh, Photoshop poster design class, five quick questions, same questions as always. Uh, and then at, from this point, you can click on the, uh, the, is it the PNG? Oh, I don't know my links. No, the PNG home site takes you to the Illinois, yeah, takes you to the Illinois State Library page. The library homepage is going to take you to the homepage. Yeah. So your best bet is uh, just to type in, type in like a caveman, www.elmwoodparklibrary.org slash PNG. So from right here, you can still get to the blog from right here, uh, but we've got an email address listed right here, PNG at elmwoodparklibrary.org. I will get that. I'm the only one that checks that. So... Send me an email with your file, or if you're trying to figure out how to get me your file, just send me an email, and we will work out the details. Because, uh, yeah, I would love to print those out free of charge, absolutely. Uh, nothing to worry about there. So I think that's pretty much it. Uh, in your email, um, you just want to attach your JPEG to the email. If you want to attach your Photoshop document, you can, but at 200 and almost 300 megabytes, probably not a good idea you're gonna to want to go with the jpeg so all right i think that's gonna do it uh, i'm gonna tweak the rest of that poster and then you might see that up on the website as the new artwork we, we'll replace uh do i have a i don't have an example oh yeah we'll replace uh we'll probably end up replacing these this i gotta create a modified version and stuff for Different, different formats, different slideshows, and what have you, but uh, you might see that artwork uh, going forward. I don't know. I don't know. I'm still, I'm still not sold on the, uh, on the fonts, honestly. Like, that's the only thing that I'm like, mm, I wish the fonts were cooler. But I know you can't install new fonts on your PNG laptop, so I didn't want to install new fonts on PNG laptop. Um, so I was trying to, you know, solidarity. I was trying to do things the way that you would do them. On your PNG laptop. So, by the way, yeah, go check out a PNG laptop uh, right here. Let's see how many are left. They are free. You can check it out with your library card. Let's take a look at the uh, record. Still a lot left on shelf. If you want to check one out, there's one in the lobby of the library. You can go, uh, you know, mouse around and check it out. There's also the uh, orientation walkthrough where I pretty much pull everything out of the bag and show you exactly what is included uh minecraft roblox a wi-fi hotspot it's all there so check that out all right i'm gonna sign off i've been uh taking up enough time actually this is one of the shortest episodes we've ever done <laughs> believe it or not could have been done 10 minutes ago though but i won't shut up
All right, I'm Aaron Sievers. I'm the Technology Librarian. I'd like to thank the State Library of Illinois. I would like to thank the Elmwood Park Library. I'd like to thank the uh, Institute of Museum Library Services and the uh, people who oversee the Library Services and Technology Act grant money um, for making all of this possible. So, and thank you very much for watching, and we will catch you again next time. All right, thanks.